I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. This discussion is under reserve. And also, this discussion is under the blood of Yahshua, under his covenant. I want to thank everybody once again for coming tonight and uh, just repeat for the for the audio portion of, of this that uh, this this discussion tonight is under reserve and this discussion is under the blood of Yahshua. So I just, uh, and I might go into that a little bit and explain to you exactly what I've just done. <coughs> the, the thing um, that a lot of people have been saying to me is, uh, David, you need to share what you're sharing and get it on video, get it on tape, and so that uh, this, this can be made available to more people. And um, my prayer is, is that, that the Spirit of the Almighty and, and speaking through me tonight, any truth that, I, that you hear that speaks truth to your heart, receive that from Him. Anything that may not speak truth to your heart, well, just take it and chew on it. Later on, if you want to spit it out, spit out the bones, chew the meat, you know. Uh, what this is all about is when we're talking about what we're doing and we have a grassroots movement uh, nationwide, have people understand who they are. When people hear words like sovereign, they hear words like redemption, they hear words such as <coughs> the different um, statutes, the Uniform Commercial Code, secured party, creditor, which it used to be, now it's just secured party, uh, debtor. A lot of people are, are confused about that. And then whenever the pressure comes on by the system, then they really get confused. Because usually that's when a spirit of fear begins to... Uh, attack to you know their their mind and then they're they're just they're just uh, they get flustered and everything that they've heard before it just goes out the window and so what I always advise people is they have to count the cost when you get into something like this and you want to make a stand for what is right for righteousness um, you need to take a look listen and before you you jump in with two feet uh, and start swimming in the water, you need to find out exactly who you are, number one. And when you have that comfort level, that comfort zone of who you are, then count the cost, be prepared for anything, and realize that in the scope of eternity, uh, we're all here just in training. This is a boot camp. You know, the, here on this earth realm, we're, we're, we're just here as in training. Who are we? When you hear the, when you heard the term, who am I? Or who are you? Um, we have in our language, we have pronouns, we have nouns, we have verbs, we have adjectives, and on and on and on. And you have to understand what type of language you're using uh, with the system because they understand what type of language they're using with you. And they train to understand, especially the... the um, administrative arbitrators, uh, uh, the ones that you see in what we call a court. Um, they're really, that's really the chambers. Um, it's really the king's bench. It's a bank. And that's why they have a cashier outside that collects money. And that's why all crimes are commercial crimes. Because all crimes have a monetary value attached to it. It doesn't matter what it is. If you have a, if you have a rock star um, that is accused of something and the bail is set for three million dollars so he can be free on his own recognizance then um, uh, he pays it if he has the money and he's walking free so all crimes are commercial crimes uh, keep in mind also that in commerce in commerce uh, we use the word democracy and you hear different teachers or people who are sharing, and this is a discussion forum, uh, you hear um, that we are not the straw man. And people need to understand what the straw man is. And we've been taught that the straw man is the all uppercase spelling of our name. I contend that that is not so. I contend that the straw man is also the upper lowercase. When you take a look at any government form, any and every government form that you see, 
there will be a box and it says last name. Those words, last name, are for a fiction. They are not for a living soul. So it doesn't matter how you spell your last name if that's what you believe you have. I do not have a last name. I have one given appellation and that is David Sidney. It's not two, it's one. And how I've made it one is with a hyphen to bring it together. Those two have now become one. Because I'm not two, I'm one. Then also I have a family name. Some say clan name. Some say the house of. But that's not my name. And I am not my name. And people ask me, what do you mean, David? You're not your name. Well, I mean that I'm not a noun. A name is a noun. A noun is a thing. I'm not a thing. And I don't believe anyone in this room tonight is a thing. And uh, a thing can't walk, can't talk, can't sleep, can't eat, can't write, can't sign. <clears throat> so, who am I? I believe that whenever I meet someone, I don't walk away and say, I met a body. I walk away in, in the English language, I say, I met a person. Sometimes I'll add an adjective to the word person, which as we know in the legal context means corporation or corporate fiction. And um, I walk away and I say, I met a person. What we mean by that is we really mean that we met a living soul. We really mean that we met a personality. We really mean that we met a character. Uh, someone has breath, someone that has volition, someone that is a sentient being, that has thought, that can speak, that can walk and talk, that has life. I go a step further and I believe that we are all spirit beings. And as a spirit being, I have a soul, which is my personality. It exhibits and manifests my spirit wants, my spirit desires through my mind, my will, and my emotions. You might want to add character or you might want to add personality, whatever you want to say there. And how can you see who I am? Well, we have a voice. And out of my spirit comes words. And I like to say that words are containers of spiritual force, either for good or for bad. Um, someone can run in this room and if the environment in this room is happy and joyful, they can come in here and start waving a gun and cursing and everything else and threatening everybody and all of a sudden the environment of this room changes. It's no longer happiness, it's no longer joy, it becomes fearful um, and uh, doubtful about what's going to happen next. So, whenever I meet someone I walk away and I say, I met a living soul. But that sounds funny to us, doesn't it? Whenever we say that, uh, and by the way, uh, this is going to be, I, I'm discussing here at the very beginning and then later on, uh, if you have any questions or anything, please write them down and we're going to open back and forth a little bit. That'd be fine. Give some analogies and give to support what I'm saying. All right, let's take this as a letter. And let's say I'm writing a letter to you or you or you and after I write the letter and I what do I put up here I give your give your given appellation the word appellation if you look it up really is talking about a title and really I I put the, the definition of a living soul I sign my autograph down here autograph is what we use that term is used for living soul so I sign my autograph, but before I sign my autograph, I put a word. And the word I put is by, B-Y, doesn't matter if the first letter is uppercase or lowercase, and then a colon, colon, semicolon, put a colon, B-Y colon. Just as the president, the president of a corporation, will sign by colon and put his autograph and comma president or P-R-E-S period what is he doing? He's saying I am not liable for any of the liens or the levies 
or debts of this corporation. If it's a huge corporation, he, when he puts by colon, that's what that means. A friend of, um, of Rice's said um, to me back about a year ago, he said that a senior, a senior officer of a bank 25 years ago, 25 years ago told him, do not ever, ever sign anything without BY colon. And what this does is it, it distances us completely from any liability. We are signing as an agent or an authorized representative for that corporate fiction name. Whether the name is a corporation name or whether the name is our corporate fiction name. Let me give you the analogy. I signed my name and now I ask the question. Here's a letter that I write to you. Some of you have heard this before. And my name is on it. All right? My autograph is on it. Am I on the letter? What's the answer? No. no. The next question. Can I get on the letter? No. Yes, I can. I take the letter and I put it on the floor. <laughs> and now I'm, and it sounds silly, but I'm standing on the letter. So I am now literally on the letter. But as silly as that sounds, I can't really get into the postal system with that letter and speak with that that party that I'm writing to. So I have to get off the letter. I get off the letter. Now what's on the letter? Footprints. Footprints. <laughs> okay. What's on, the, what's on the letter is wet ink. May have dried already by now. Okay. And that ink is on a piece of paper. That's not me. Any more than when we look into a mirror and we point to the image in that mirror, we can't say that that's me. That's a reflection of me. This is me. Or this living soul goes by me whenever I speak of me. Because me can also be a noun. Okay, a pronoun. So I can be a pronoun, right? So we have to understand, even whenever you've heard me say before, uh, in, in, in a discussion in a, in a king's bench area, which is also a vessel with a captain of the vessel flying a flag with a gold fringe around it and he's the captain of the vessel and the captain always makes the law and he says I make the law here don't you bring that constitutional stuff in here don't you bring that in I say what goes in here if he asks me if he asks me are you and he says the name and we've heard this before are you addressing me we answer with a question and if he says yes, or she says yes, what do we say then? Or for these proceedings, I go by me, addressee. What did I say? Did I say, I'm me, for these proceedings, I'm me, addressee? Or did I say, for these proceedings, I go by me, addressee? He's the addressor, I'm the addressee. If he presses it, okay. I go by the one given appellation, David Sidney, with the family name right out by me addressee. And I've done this on instruments before and it has protected me beautifully. And people have called me all around the country. I've done this on instruments in the banking system. And when I've done it, people have called me and said, people are getting arrested for, for something like what you, how come you're not? I said, well, number one, I pray. And I believe that the Almighty has His angels about me. I believe that I, that I stand by and under the blood covenant of Yehoshua, our Savior. He is our Messiah. And that's the Hebrew name that He went by. And also I say, and I believe His Spirit gave me wisdom to know how to sign. <laughs> so I'm not, li I'm not liable for this. Some of the other things, the little practical things, if you're, if you're doing a document, put down at the bottom right, front and back, your, your initials or your thumbprint and above it you can do it in red ink, it helps red ink is how the Pope signs signifying that he's a living soul he's a flesh and blood man okay, and above it it's nice to always have the word seal capital S, lowercase e-a-l and then beside it to the left put the word copy claim connected with a hyphen copy and claim to the left. 
to, to the left of your seal. All right? You remember the signet seal? Yeah. What are we doing? We're putting the seal. And for you all here in Texas, I highly recommend that you fly the Bonnie, the Bonnie Blue at the top left and you put a $1 postage stamp over here taking a red pen and signing over it with your autograph with the word buy in front of it with a colon and then underneath it with the autograph. Put the words with the autograph. Whoever has that is the postmaster in commerce. All right. Over here, the flag establishes what law this is flying under. So the Republic law is what it flies under. And it becomes a bill of laden in commerce, in the sea of commerce, and there's cargo on it. If your if you're intellectual property, which is your on it, that you've done into the county records, um, and also in the Uniform Commercial Code, that is cargo. All right, and then if you also say here uh, what Walt is doing, and many of you know Walt, uh, he 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 has the he has the collateral, the collateral for the for the living soul, not the body, which has always been the case, and that's why they grab the body and put it into a warehouse with a number on it, and um, they don't they don't call that 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 warehouse property. They don't call it. Um, by the name, they'll call it by the by the number. And so, uh, now the other thing I wanted to say was um, just to give an analogy. Is I asked the question before we were born into this earth realm. I asked the question, "Were you alive?" What's the answer? Yes. Where were you alive? In the womb, in the womb of your flesh and blood mother. All right. Did you have a name? Most likely, no. Except your creator knew you. Your creator knew who you were. He may have had a name for you. We don't know. All right. He may have had a title or some way of, of indicating that you are different than this baby over here that's in this mother's womb. All right. And sometimes the flesh and blood mother on this earth realm, they will name their baby before the baby is actually birthed. All right. So the next question I, I ask is, which follows this is, is pretty logical, is when you were born through the birth canal, that live birth of the flesh and blood living soul coming out into this world, all right? In all normal cases, were you alive? Yes. Were you breathing? Yes. Could you move? Yes. Could you scream? Could you cry? Absolutely. How many of you had the name? Most of us didn't have the name. 30 seconds, one minute after we were born. We didn't have the name. So what I'm doing is I'm giving an analogy to show what I'm speaking of, that we are not the name. We go by the name. And if you go back years ago, decades ago, in the old black and white movies, the cowboy movies, the, the um, usually it was the, co the, the cowboy movies, you would see it, um, Audrey um, um, uh, Gene Autry and s some other names like that, um, you would hear the actors actually introduce themselves in the movie to some other character in the movie by, I go by the name, or the name is, and they put the definite article in front of their, their name. The <laughs> name is. But rarely did you ever see them say, or hear them say, I am John Wayne. They would say, I go by the name John Wayne, or I go by John Wayne. And if you really want to start seeing some reactions, do it with what we call a public servant. It doesn't matter who the public servant is. It could be a clerk that's taking some money. It could be someone in a quote-unquote government building. Just try it. They ask you what your name is, and say, I go by David. I go by John. I go by Mary. And if you really want to get a reaction out of them, say, I go by the name David. I've had them respond to me all the time. All the time. Either they look at me in silence when their jaw drops open, or they look at me and say, you go by the name, huh? Oh, you really, you, oh, you go by the name. And they mock me. And I look at them and I say, yes, that's right. I go by the name. 
And I wonder if they really are cognitively aware of what I'm saying, or if it's the spirit that may be behind this whole system, in this big matrix system that we're living in, as, as, um, but we're not of it, we're living in it. Some of us are of it, and if we make ourselves of it with, team, with the system, or our hand contracting with the system. So um, this another analogy is, if you pull out what we call, commonly call an ID, and if you have someone say, that's you, that's you, isn't it? And they're pointing to the picture on the ID. Well, is that you? No. If they say that to me, I say, no, that's not me. And I've said it to them before. I've said it to the policy enforcers. Policy is a little bit longer than police, but uh, means the same thing. They're enforcing policies, codes, rules, and regulations of a corporation. The city of Dallas is a corporation. city of Irving is a corporation. city of Arlington is a corporation. city of wherever, Fort Worth, they're all corporations. And they all have corporate charters. And all these public servants are all under oath. They have an oath of office to uphold the corporate charter. And one of the things that the corporate charter is very, very clear about is that the corporation is not to violate the rights of the people. If we go into a summons or an, a, a, if we go into an invitation, I should say, we, the living soul, we walk in and we're answering to that name. If we do not put a certified copy of the oath of office of that public servant sitting up there on that um, bench, if we don't put that in, and you can obtain it from the Secretary of State's office. Um, now, if, you've, if you're given trouble about obtaining that certified copy, then you can invoke the oath of office by saying, for the record, upon your oath of office. That's all you have to say. It's for the record, and you are now invoking his oath of office. You will see a huge difference of how that case goes forward, how, that, how those proceedings go forward. For the record, because everything in a record court is for the record. That's why there's a, a recorder, a court recorder what's called a court recorder. For the record, upon your oath of office. And you can't say it too many times. You can't say it too many Parrot. Just be a parrot. Everything you say, for the record. For the record, upon your oath of office. May I have your name, please? If you're in commerce and you're conducting your commercial affairs, don't you like to know who you're doing business with? I do. And I want it for the record. If I'm ever told, raise your, raise your right hand and swear, right? Well, isn't it only fair that the oath of office that he has raised his right hand or she has raised their right hand, isn't it only fair that for the record that that is invoked for the record and you call that to remembrance for those proceedings? It's only fair. Try to get one of them to actually swear that they will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me go on. Right? Try to get any of them to do that. Try to get the prosecuting attorney to do that. Or the attorney for the quote-unquote fictitious plaintiff. I just mentioned something. I'm just flowing here, so sometimes you'll hear me go off on tangents. If you look on Black, in Black's Law Dictionary, 7th edition, Black's Law Dictionary, you look under fictitious plaintiff. And it says very clearly that a fictitious plaintiff is perpetrating a fraud upon the court. Isn't that wonderful? I think it's wonderful news. I think it's great. Because the day will come that Yahushua said, that day will come that they will grab you and they will drag you before the magistrates, before the judges. Take no thought in that day, in that hour, what you're going to say. For the Holy Spirit of your Creator, He will bring to your remembrance all things. And He will bring to you the words to say. But what do we need to do prior to that time? We need to study to show ourselves a Proved. <laughs> all right. So all of this all ties into the authorized version of the crown scriptures. The crown has authorized the version, and it was King James of England that gave the authorized version. There is another there's another authorized version that 
they really go by as well, and I believe it's the Catholic Church. But the Catholic Church and the and the uh, and England were in they were uh, they were in treaty. They were in contract at the time, and uh, they still are in contract. So uh, everything is everything is all the all the strings are being pulled by by the universal church. So we have a lot of words that we really don't understand what, what we're saying that have come into, into our language from all different sources. And uh, like for example, recently we heard in a meeting uh, last week, I believe it was last week, that Mark got up, is that right? He got up and uh, he related his testimony, his, his version of what happened being incarcerated for a short period of time and how he got out. And he said that they had him sign a PR bond. Okay, how many of you know what a PR bond is? Some of you do. All right, personal recognizance bond. I had a friend over in Texarkana. She had heard this from somebody else. She gives me a call, all excited. She's a grandmother, and she said, Hey, I heard something that you're going to be really interested in. She said, A guy down in Florida recently walked into a case that he was just at this, he was at his, you know, at the end of his rope. And he walked in and he was sitting in the peanut gallery and waiting for his name to be called. All right, And that was the fiction name. He did understand that. And he didn't really know exactly what he was going to say. He had a lot of things that were going through his mind. He was apprehensive. And when the name was called, he stood up without answering, without opening his mouth, and he walked forward into the bar opened it up and walked in. Now what's for the record? If the court reporter is typing anything, all she or he can type is someone walked in to the court area, to the bar. Because there was nothing acknowledged yet about the name. The name was called, but they have to get our acknowledgement. Verbal acknowledgement. Are you such and such a name? When he went forward, of course, the, next, the, the first question that came to him was, are you such and such a name? And he paused, thought about it, raised his finger and pointed at the administrative arbitrator, the facilitator, the king's bench, and he pointed and said, I do not recognize you pointed to the court clerk, I do not recognize you, pointed to the attorneys, I do not recognize you, pointed to the court reporter, I do not recognize you, pointed to the bailiff and said, I do not recognize you. Complete silence. And he turned around and he slowly walked out. And no one said a word. The whole courtroom was completely silent. What was he saying? Well, she read it to me from the Black's Law Dictionary. And I got excited and I went and confirmed it because just because someone says something to me, I want to confirm it myself. So I went, I believed her, but I just wanted to see what it said. And I checked several different versions, the 5th edition, the 7th edition, and it took me to, the word recognize took me to the word recognizance. And to summarize the word recognizance, the word recognizance <coughs> means... By definition, by definition from the Black's Law Dictionary, it means that someone is contracting with the Crown in its judicial capacity. And so when he pointed his finger, he pointed his finger and said, I do not recognize you, what was he saying? I do not contract with the Crown, I do not contract with the Crown, I do not contract with the Crown, I do not contract with the Crown. Now who are these agents here? Who are these, these living souls that are hiding behind their corporate fiction capacity? And he's the only living soul in there. And what did he say when he said, I? He said, I, who am I? I is a living soul. Because a, a fictitious plaintiff can't say I. A fictitious plaintiff can't say me. A fictitious plaintiff can't sign, can't walk, can't even sign a power of attorney to give to the plaintiff's attorney that's representing the fictitious plaintiff produce the power of attorney that's signed giving you Mr. Plaintiff Attorney the authority the power of attorney to represent 
the fictitious plaintiff. And uh, some other things that uh, just tie into this is, um, and, and to this day he hasn't, he hasn't heard anything. Where there is no contract, there is no case. 1938, Supreme Court, Erie Railroad versus Tompkins. So um, I'm just uh, moving on here. I want to share with you a little bit. Many of you have seen the, the Matrix, the movie The Matrix, or maybe the second version, the first version. Let's say that this is the Matrix right here, okay? Joe, what is what did the uh, when we looked this up? Was it ecclesiastical matrix? What what did it say that talked about the Catholic Church and having all of its its um, peripheral branches? And it used this word right here, matrix. Right? Do you remember that there in the Black's Law Dictionary? It has a stem that relates to uh, patria is father, matria would be mother. So that would be. That which gives birth to everything after all these perverse little children I would imagine. Over here we have a word patriot. And we hear that word being used, and I tell people, I'm a non patriot. And they say, What do you mean? And I say, Well, if you look at the root word as Joe just uh, shared with us, the root word in the Latin is patria, okay, meaning father. All right? And this is the Holy Father in the Vatican. All right? So if I'm a patriot, I am somehow the son of that Holy Father. We also have a word that we see too, S-E-E. -E. Usually it's capital S and lowercase E-E. -E. And sometimes we see the word holy, the word holy in front of that word. I believe, we have tried and tried, I've looked and looked for a definition of that word. Maybe I should go to the Catholic, I haven't found it yet, but uh, if anybody finds it, please, please let me know. I'd like to find out. But the Holy See is the Holy State. All right? And I believe it's been translated to mean state. So whenever you have the member states of the United Nations, those are member sees of the Holy See. Whenever you have the United States, you have united seats. So what do we live here? Here in, uh, we, we live on the land called the Republic of Texas. We are Texians. And this is the word that was used in 1836. Nowadays, that's now the, the state has come in and they're using the word Texan. But I'm not a Texan, I'm a Texian. I'm standing on this soil and so I'm living in the Republic of Texas. So if we look at this word here, we have an act and a, a Patriot Act that was, that was um, put through and approved recently by our federal corporation in the District of Columbia, the government of the District of Columbia, 10 square miles. And they put that through and it, it really was caused a lot of concern in Congress and the Senate and everything, or so they, so they showed concern, and waiting to see how people would react to it. And then there was a Roman numeral two that came after it, that came out. So anyone that is this word here and calls themselves this name is under this act, is agreeing to contract with that act that has been put out. So we need to be careful, need to be cautious about what words we're calling ourselves. So um, right here we have this right here. Let's look at something. I also call myself stateless because I'm I'm sealess, S E E L E S S. I may have coined that term. I don't know, but I'm stateless. That's for sure. And so, this side over here, we have a matrix that's a debt monetary system. We have the debtor side, and we have the creditor side over here. Okay. All of this that's in this square here, in the world, this is the world, the whole thing is all about corporate fictions. Everything in this square is, is fiction. It's not real. It's perception. And if you saw the movie The Matrix, you know that as they went in there, they thought they were in there. And actually what happened in there could really affect their living soul body. 
if they if they died in the matrix, they believed that they were really dying and their their heart stopped. If they got socked or hit, you saw the blood running down. Okay? But they weren't getting punched out in the real realm, in the reality realm, only in the fictional realm. So we really understand the power of the mind with this. All right, over on this side, we have a mini version of what you're looking at here. You have the debtor here, and you have the creditor here. All right? So you have the debtor and the creditor. Over here, you have the creditor. And what's going on here? This over here is really the crown as an agent for the Vatican. The state of the Vatican. All right? And I, don't, don't get me wrong, I, I am not anti-Catholic. I'm, an, I'm not anti-Protestant. I'm not Protestant because I'm not protesting. And as a sovereign, born a sovereign, created by the great sovereign of the universe, the one supreme being, the almighty, the creator of the seen and the unseen, the visible and the invisible, I was made, I was created in his image and in his likeness. And if you study out the scriptures, you will notice that there was uh, taught to us by our Savior that God, this term that we use, God, is a spirit. And those that worship God must worship Him in spirit and truth. Now, whether or not you, you believe in this, that's, that's, that, that doesn't matter. For these purposes, what I'm saying is we go back to the beginning and if people believe in the creation story, we see that God created man, male and female, in his likeness and in his image. Well, it stands to reason that if he's spirit, then he created us in his image and in his likeness as spirit beings. So I ask people, is God in the universe? I say no. I say the universe is in God. And that does a number on our finite minds. Let's go back to this. <laughs> okay. Debtor and creditor. In this system over here, let's just take this country here. We have someone up here that goes by this title. And that is in a 10 square mile called DC. And that's a government. There is a government of the District of Columbia. You go on the website, type in government of the District of Columbia and you'll see the website pops up. That 10 square mile area is a government. And that corporation, it's a federal corporation that's in that 10 square miles, has brought all of us through the birth certificate. I'm not going to go into a lot of that because most of you understand this and if you don't, start going to some websites, put in the word redemption, put in the word, um, there's some very good websites. Uh, go ahead and give me some, does anybody know? Some, some Build websites. Buildfreedom.com. Buildfreedom.com in regards to words, look at uh, language of freedom and, and the anatomy of freedom. Um, go to Americans Bulletin. Um, dot com or maybe it's dot org the aware group dot com there's many of them out there and you can start gleaning from from many of these groups and their websites you can start gleaning from them about the history the true history of this country and the true history of the world so anyways but if we look at this what does this this party here think he is whoever's standing in that office the creditor right but he's really the debtor he's the debtor to whom to the big creditor over here. The big creditor over here, by treaty and by contract, has this whole US of A, all caps, in debt to this side. And we know what happened in 1933. All the gold was taken. Franklin D. Roosevelt, he put out an executive order. You turn in all your gold. This was after the gold rush, etc. And everybody did. Everybody gave up their gold to get pieces of paper. And he said, well, these pieces of paper, they have precious metals back in them, and you can go in and you can exchange it for precious metal, like silver. Up until 1972, you could take in a U.S. dollar, and if, they, if you went into a bank and you asked for a silver dollar, if they had it, they'd give it to you. Try doing that today. You can't. So there's no intrinsic value metal or no intrinsic value 
anything that is backing these pieces of paper with ink on them. So what gives it the value? What gives it the value is the, the, the full faith of the people. The full faith of the people of the world that use this. And we call this system here the world. Okay? This is the world system. So over here, if you understand generally, ex uh, generally accepted accounting principles, if not, go get uh, accounting for dummies at Barnes & Noble or some other bookstore and start understanding how to balance a, how to balance an account, a statement. And when you start understanding this, and I'm not an expert on this, but I have a, a, a limited knowledge of it, but I do understand that you cannot take a debt instrument with one line through it, not two lines, it's an S with one line through it. If I owe you $100, I cannot pay that with, a, with another debt instrument. A debt instrument is what? In banking terminology, the word note means promise to pay. So you look at our, what we call United States dollars, and the top it says note, Federal Reserve note. By the way, for those of you that don't know, the Federal Reserve banking system, they will tell you this, they have a brochure, they will tell you themselves, it is a private banking system. This is one of the only, as fact, the only private bank in the world that acts as a central bank for a country that I know of. But I could be wrong. There could be other ones out there. So that word note means promise to pay. So what are we operating over here in? This is what we call the money of account side. This is the money of exchange side that has intrinsic value over here, gold, silver, other precious metals as well as our exemption, and I'll get to that a little bit later. All right, so over here, what do you have to do to balance this off? All right, this is the plus side, and this is the minus side. The only way to pay a debt is with intrinsic value, wealth, or money of exchange. You can't pay a debt with a debt. Because if you do, what happens is, if you put another $100 here that is a debt note promised to pay, and what do you have? You have 200 And it keeps driving that deeper and deeper and deeper until you are just a super debtor. All right? So how do we get out of this? Well, there was something called the House Joint Resolution, June 5th, 1933, and they never told us how to get out of it. So anytime that we try to discharge this, Really, the Congress is supposed to discharge this. They are the ones that promised, our representatives, they promised to discharge all of our debts dollar for dollar. And they don't do it. And any time that we try to do it with this side, most of the time they dishonor. And they steal what we call our exemption. You look in Webster's, exemption means that we are not, uh, let me see, the word exemption, if I'm exempt from something, I'm not liable for that. I am not tied to that. I'm excluded from that, all right? So the sovereigns of the world, what we call sovereigns, we are sovereign, but what the world calls a sovereign, which is a monarch, do they pay debts? Do they have debts? No. Why? The king or the queen, they are the title owner of the whole domain. True? So who pays debts to them? Who pays tribute to them? They're subjects. All right? So getting back to this right here, let me do some red, red ink here so we can... This is the living soul side. All right? We have the word exemption. Exempt. Done. Okay? What is the exemption? Do you remember in the, the movie The Matrix? If you haven't seen it, go see it. In the movie The Matrix, how was the how did the whole fictional robotic machine world how did it get its energy to to exist? From human life. From human life. They grew the babies in these big artificial wombs and they had some type of connection there that was extracting the electromagnetic grid around our bodies 
around the bodies of the living souls, the flesh and blood, men and women, and they were extracting that as electricity. All right? And a lot of this whole system operates based upon electricity. If you, uh, if you have a battery, let's say you have a battery, and a battery has a positive pole and a negative pole. All right? And you notice that in the, the commercial world, they use words such as charge. You go to a store, and what do they do? They charge your credit card. And what do you do when you sign it? Do you know what you're doing when you sign it? You discharge it. Immediately when you put your wet ink on that little piece of paper, you have given them your exemption. That's the energy that they're looking for. All right? Now, in the fractional banking system, they can take that, and if they know how to do it, they can leverage that. Ten times plus, plus, plus. With bonds and other created instruments. All right? But definitely what they do with it is they take that and they will send it over to this side to the Department of the Treasury. Notice I didn't say U.S. Department of the Treasury. This is just the Department of the Treasury. All right. The Department of the Treasury is representing the IMF, representing the United Nations, representing the Crown, representing the Vatican. They're all the creditor side over here. And when they get any type of discharge by us, they can take that to this side over here and they can ask for an electronic funds trans transfer to be wired back to credit the account of whoever we're giving them to. Because we cannot pay our debts with a debt note. A promise to pay. It's impossible. Many of these big corporations, the municipalities out here that are called corporations, they will take our debt notes. They're getting paid several times. They will take our debt notes and put it into what we call a CAFR account. C-A-F-R. And the CAFR stands for a Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Go into the internet if you'd like to research this and just put Comprehensive, finan comprehensive Annual Financial Report and you will start getting some information. I'm trying to remember the fellow's name that's done so much research on that. Uh, what's his name? Walter. Burian. Wal uh, what's his first name? Walter. Walter Burian. He has done excellent research on this. So the CAFR account is actually like the old banking system and the old banking system was that any of these commercial banks out here were not allowed to loan money unless there was a compensating balance that the bank was holding by its depositors. So if they had $100 million, then they could loan that amount or a percentage of that amount, uh, of, you know, give or take, out to the commercial market. A construction company or a developer wanted to come and get a line of credit, they could loan that. And what were, the, what were they doing? They were using the compensating balance account there. And the CAFR account is really just that. It's a compensating balance account in accounting that has to sit into an account and cannot be touched. Why? Because from that compensating balance account is created debt instruments called bonds or whatever you may want, and they, would, they can do it ten times. If they, have a ten, if they have a million dollars in that CAFR account, they can have a bond of ten million dollars and trade it on the world bond markets. So when you get a ticket, What's going on? If you get a, let's say, $200 ticket, that goes into the CAFR account along with all the others, and the units that are in there will be used to be a compensating balance for the bonds or the fresh cut bank paper that is being traded on the world markets. That's what's going on. And so what happens is, is when we are trying to use what we normally call bonds, these bonds that we are supposed to be able to use, it's our exemption, we're, we're bonded to our corporate fiction voucher. The straw man vouches for us. 
and indemnifies us by an indemnity clause, if we have a security agreement, indemnifies us from all, all liability, all liens, levies, and debts. And the straw man takes that for us. The straw man vouches for us in this fictional world. So we have an account over here. It's a prepaid, unlimited credit on this side over here. And where did that come from? 1933. They took all of our lawful money, according to the Constitution, they took it all away. We have no more. If you try to go into this place here, this restaurant, and take out some silver coins and go to the cashier and try to pay in silver, they won't take it. Very rare would you find that. Very, very rare. Try paying in gold. You can't pay in gold. They want the worthless piece of paper that says promise to pay. So they take the promise to pay and then they pay their suppliers that they buy for the produce and the meats and everything and they promise to pay the supplier. And the supplier is the manufacturer and is promising to pay the producer, the raw material producer. And everybody's promising to pay but nobody's paying. And what does that create? It creates a super debt system. And occasionally it gets so deep that they have to wipe it clean. There were a couple of twin towers that went down recently. And trillions, I forget how many, of these debt instruments were wiped out. How many is that? 30? 40? 40 trillion. 40 trillion were wiped out in one day. Now they get to start over again. At the end of every 70 years, the federal corporation get, got to wipe it out. The, the international bankruptcy, 70, 70, 70, from 1789 to 19, 1999, 210 years, every single president that comes into this federal corporation agrees to keep the bankruptcy going to the crown. So when you have a bankruptcy, don't you have collateral? So what, what happened with with the bankruptcy. Whenever the bankruptcy happened back in 1789, what, what, you know, do we all know what happened? What happened was whenever the Crown picked up the notes from France and from the Netherlands that financed the Revolutionary War for the colonialists, the Crown picked them up by treaty. The King of England was the King of France. So when the Colonial Bank of the United States defaulted defaulted on the notes, 18 million libre. Guess who picked up the notes? You are my debtors again. So since 1789, so we were really a free nation from 1776 to 1789. And since that time, anybody that has been domiciled in the District of Columbia, and that's what they do with the birth certificate, they get us to be domiciles of the District of Columbia. So we are now occupying the different states that are territories of that District of Columbia. That's why you have an occupation. People don't understand the power of words. Every time, going back to the word recognize that I spoke of before, we use this word recognize. Oh, I recognize him. Oh, I recognize her. And what are we saying every time we say the word recognize? I contract with the crown. I contract with, I'm a subject of the crown. And we don't understand what has happened in our language. And how do, we, how do we free ourselves from this? So this is all kind of messed up here, but let me start over again here a little bit. All right? So what's happening with our exemption? Our exemption is that we were, we were the, and still are, we're the preferred shareholders of the United States of America, the federal corporation and all its agencies. We are the preferred shareholders, and we have, the bodies have become the collateral for the bankruptcy. And the energy of the people, we the people have become the, the uh, collateral for the bankruptcy of this federal corporation. That every time we sign our name without by colon and without under reserve or without prejudice, sometimes people like to put UCC 1-207 or UCC 1-308 now, if we don't reserve all of our rights, we are signing as surety and guarantor for the liens and the levies of that bankrupt corporation, which makes the living soul, we're saying we're a corporate fiction, that we're that fiction name, that straw man name. 
So when we look at all this, how do we get out of this? If they're not going to honor this side, doesn't they're all a bunch of crooks. This is the whole banking side, including the corporations that have their banks within the corporation. If you go down to something that's called the municipal court, that's a bank. Don't believe me? Go down and pay a ticket and see a line with a rope. And you have cashiers. And you go up to the teller that may say clerk or cashier, and you pay. It's a bank, but it only goes one way. It doesn't come back this way. It only goes one way. <laughs> because they're, what they're telling us is, you are our debtor. You are our servant. Well, I, I contend that if we're the servant, then why don't they call us public servants? So that we can bow and scrape to our masters. If they're called, if the official is called a public servant, shouldn't he be serving us? Have you ever, I grew up as a missionary kid in the country of Thailand. And as many countries, missionaries, it, the, the labor is very, very cheap labor, very low cost labor. And everyone has maids or servants. When you don't have electricity, or you're, you're burning with uh, kerosene lamps, or you may have electricity, but you don't have air conditioning, and the weather is 110, 120 degrees with 100% humidity and it's not raining, <laughs> you're, you're sticking to yourself. So there's a lot of bathing going on and you know, at least two or three times a day. And one of the common ways that uh, Thai people to this day greet each other is, have you had your shower yet? Have you had your bath yet? They want to make sure that you're comfortable. And it's just a, it's a cultural thing. But um, I had grew up with servants. And I'll tell you, my servants never grabbed me by the neck and threw my, my, my body down face first into the ground and stepped on the back of my neck or put their knee into the back of my, my back and bent my arms back. They would have been fired immediately, especially if the boss of the house found out, my dad or my mom. All right, They were being paid. We also are paying our public servants. That doesn't make us debtors. That makes us, if they're being paid out of our pocket, they are our servants. They should do what we say. All right? What has happened? What has happened to this whole matrix here? All right? We are really standing outside this matrix. And we live outside this matrix over here. And I'm going get, to get to, real quick here, I'm going to get to how we, if they're not going to honor our exemption, if they're not going to honor our unlimited prepaid credit on this side, then how do we get them to honor it? And Walter and Joe and forerunners like Barton and forerunners like Roger and forerunners like Rice and forerunners, there's many forerunners out there that have paid the price to lay the foundation to help us come to what the Spirit of the Almighty is revealing to us today. Okay? And so here we are out here, male or female, created in the image and the likeness of the Almighty. We're spirit beings walking around with souls, mind, will, and emotions, and we created everything. David, give me yeah. one second. Yeah. Okay. We're changing the tape here. <laughs> okay, we're getting back here, and someone asked me what to write across the, uh, the top right of your document, and you have a $1 stamp there. Remember, we are the creators of the creation fiction system. Which is, which is greater, the creator or the creation? Creator. 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 Can a fiction create itself? No. It's the creation. Can it speak? Can it walk? Can it talk? Can it eat? Can it sleep? Nothing. It can't do any of that. Can it answer? No. We have created it. We, the people, the living souls, have created this whole fictional system. That's why we are the preferred shareholder. We own it. It can't exist without us. So going back, going back to this, okay, just go on and hold that question. Going back to this, somebody asks, what to write across? You write, you write across by colon, because I am not the name, by colon, with the given name spelling, which is the upper lowercase autograph, connected, if, I have, if you have two, connected with a hyphen. If you have one, that's fine. You have one given Listen to the words. Okay. One given appellation. I'm not using the word name. I'm saying one given appellation. Why do I stress one? 
Because I am not two. I am one. Joshua said one time, if your eye be single. And what is the opposite of that? Evil. I don't want to be evil. I don't want to be unrighteous. Because the righteous rule over the unrighteous. That's how it's designed. So anyone that's two, anyone that's doing business as with a DBA, is not one, they're two. That's why I ask, may I have your name please? For the record, upon, upon your oath of office, may I have your name please? What's he going to say? Or is she going to say? You call me Judge Smith? Is that one or is that two? That's two. They know what this is. They know what it is. All right? So underneath we have with the autograph, we're signing without prejudice above with the small letters, just print, very small. A lot of times I'll try to blend it in so they won't, it won't stand out. You don't want to draw attention. You want to live at peace with all men, if you, all men if you can. But if they ask me what it is, I just say that my counselor has told me this is the way to sign. Who is my counselor? All right. I put a copyright symbol because I've copyrighted copy claim. All right, so I put this across at an angle across the postage stamp, a $1 postage stamp, making, making you the postmaster. This is your document in commerce, in the sea of commerce. It's a bill of laden, whatever the document is. Now, this is not the document here, but whatever the document is. And you put a flag up at the top left, whatever flag you want to fly. I suggest that you fly a flag that signifies some type of sovereignty. The Hague Convention, the Hague in the Netherlands, has written to the Republic of Texas and said, we cannot rule on any matters of the Republic of Texas because the Republic of Texas is a sovereign nation. The Supreme Court of Texas, the, the State of Texas Corporation, has said the same thing. There is no treaty, legal or lawful treaty of annexation with the United States of America, we are an occupied nation. Occupied by the federal corporation called the United States of America. Enforced by the Fifth Army in Killeen, Waco area. All right? If you want to get justice nowadays, because under the War Powers Act and Trading with the Enemies Act, that was done way back, when was that, the 30s or the 40s? Whenever that was done, this United States of America corporation had to be able to justify their occupation of what they called territories. Well, this is not a territory. There's never been a treaty. This is one of the only sovereign nations, I believe it is the only sovereign nation left in the world today, that is proclaiming its sovereignty. All right? Now, it's okay to have a corporation, a huge corporation, come over the top of it. Just like you go to Austin, you find a, rot a big rotunda, and when the governor recently had the president of Mexico come, they were taking some photo, photo ops, and we were standing on a big seal right in the rotunda with the Capitol building of the state of Texas over it. And what did their seal say? Republic of Texas. They're standing right on top of it. It's the foundation of where we live. We allow these corporations to come in. We don't want them to leave. We want them to just honor their oath of office to uphold their corporate charter to not violate the rights of the people. The Attorney General of this corporation, the state of Texas, and the Attorney General of every corporation out there, of every C, S, E, E, or state, those state corporations, they have someone that's called an Attorney General, and he has an oath of office to uphold the corporate charter. You know what his job duty is, one of his job duties? He is supposed to sue and go after any corporation that compels anyone to contract with a corporation. And they will do it. But you have to put it in their face and say, hey, upon your oath of office, come get these guys. Even if it's the corporation that he's working for, they have to uphold their, cor their, their corporate charter. They're all, they're all corporations. Okay, going back to this. We are out here, and by the way, I said here, I put my autograph spelling properly with a hyphen to connect if there's two names. I make it one because I'm not two, I'm one. And all this is is just a title, it's an appellation, 
Go look up the word appellation. You'll see what I'm talking about. Are you putting your family name after that second? Colon. Family name. You can also do colon clan of flat, the, the, the clan name. or the You can actually write that in. You know, Rice actually says clan of McLeod. All right? The, the family name, that's not my name. It's not my appellation. My name is this name. And underneath I do, or behind the family name, sometimes to really protect myself, and I've copyrighted this combination as well, I put by colon, and that case is always, I always do small, small b, by colon, capital M, lowercase letter e, me, comma, address e. <laughs> and let them figure out who I am. There's two buys here. The straw man name, the corporate fiction straw man name here is being signed by an authorized representative. But that's not me. And this is not me either. That's ink on a, on a whiteboard here. That's not me any more than I pull out a picture and say, that's not me, that's a picture of me. I look in the mirror, that's not me, that's a reflection of me. So are we beginning to understand who we are? And if we say, I am, we need to understand what we're saying. A very poor translation, Joe has helped me with this because he's a scholar in, in Hebrew, um, to some degree, I believe. <laughs> I probably qualified that, I should say. <laughs> but uh, he, he is, has helped me understand that... Um, who I am when I say I am. You know, you have, many of us have heard this term, I am that I am. We saw it in the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. Say I am that I am and go, to, go tell Pharaoh that I, am a, that I am that I am. Well, the word that means in place of. Well, what is I am? Is that present tense, past tense, or future tense? Present. Okay. Transit. Transit. In transit. In transit. Okay, what's more correct would be, I will be that I will be. And I haven't talked with Joe about this, but I think even what more correct than that would be, I was, I am, and I will be what I will be, or what that I will be. I was, I am, and I will be that I will be. Or that I am, or I was, because the Almighty has always been, he's the, he's the eternal one, in the eternal yesterday, in the eternal past, he was. In the now, he is. And he will be. So the hip, the hip pill, uh, uh, how, how do you spell it again? Future causative hip pill. Hip hill. In the Hebrew, a hip hill is the future causative form of the verb. And just put in H-I-P, H-I-L, and start researching that on Google. And you'll find a whole lot about that. Okay, uh, question. Something about the UCC? Uh, okay. The UCC 1-207 and 1-308. They just came out with the, the amended version is now 1-308. And 1-308, when you go look at the, the amended version of 1-308 in the first section of the Uniform Commercial Code, it says C1-207. So they, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. You know, it's like maybe they're trying to justify that if, if we use UCC 1-207, that we're incorrect and they can grab us. Because we didn't say UCC 1-308. But if you go look at UCC 1-308, what do you find? C1-207. <laughs> Let's go to the Anderson's commentary on the Uniform Commercial Code. If you go down to the, any civil law library, I've went down to the Dallas Civil Law Library and I researched this. It's a volume set of a commentary, the most recognized, as far as I understand, one of the, if not the most recognized commentary that's used by the judicial system for the Uniform Commercial Code, which the Supreme Court, by the way, has ruled is the law of the land, the Uniform Commercial Code. What is the Uniform Commercial Code? It's a codified version of the Law of Contracts. Originally termed Law Merchants. 
between the merchants in Europe that traded with each other. And there was a court, the court of, and, the, and the administrator of the court was called the mayor of the court. And the enforcers of the court were called the constables. The court was really not called the court, it was called the stable. So the mayor of the stable had constables that were the enforcers of the stable. So when you had merchants that had a dispute, bring it before the mayor of the stable and ask the mayor of the stable, which is also called magistrate, ask the mayor of the stable, uh, let's, let's get this resolved, all right? When you go look at the Uniform Commercial Code, yes, I'm sorry. Absolutely. And if you want to invoice in, but anybody in a corporation, invoice the mayor. I've done it. And it stopped everything. Okay, cool. I, like I, also, I also invoiced a whole lot of other people right down to the policy enforcer. And it stopped everything. To this day, three years have gone by, and nothing has happened. And I'll, I'll get to that a little bit in just a second here. Uniform Commercial Code, Anderson's commentary. You go look at it. Look at the first section. UCC 1-207, I recommend anybody do this, go to your civil law library and ask the librarian to show you where the volume set for the Anderson's commentary of the Uniform Commercial Code. All right? You will find in section 1-207, I'm going to summarize what it says. It says that all you must do before you dialogue, either written or verbally, with the system, is say three, a choice of three, two, two word terms, without prejudice, under reserve, or under protest. And the last one I believe is a trap, and I'll tell you why in a second. Without prejudice, it's a full reservation of rights, you are not entering into any controversy or protesting. You're not protesting, you're not entering into controversy, no dispute, no conflict, because a sovereign never does that. They accept everything. It doesn't matter if it's, if, if it's true or not, they accept it as true. They own everything. The acceptance for value basically means, thank you very much, I now own it. Thank you for giving it to me. I, I owned it in the first place because you're a fiction. All right? Under reserve, obviously, it means you, your rights, all your law, lawful rights given by your creator are all under reserve. Under protest, why do I believe it's a trap? Because we're not protesting. If we protest as a sovereign, we enter into controversy, conflict, or dispute. We enter into the realm of commerce, which is governed by war or dispute, the knowledge of good and evil, right and wrong, and we're defending our rights. If we defend, we make ourselves the defendant. If we make ourselves the defendant, we make ourselves the debtor. We equate ourselves as a, de as a debtor. All right? He mentions in there, Anderson mentions, that if you forget and you begin dialoguing with anyone, fiction or otherwise, and then remember that you forgot to reserve all your rights, too late, sorry, you can't go back and do it then. It's too late, you've already contracted. So when I began this discussion, I said, this discussion is under reserve. That's all you have to say. It's not necessary. You do not have to put UCC 1-207, UCC or UCC 1-308. You don't have to put that. All you have to put is those two two-word terms. With all rights reserved or just under reserve or without prejudice. All right? Um, the other thing he says, go research 1-103.6. And basically what that says in the Anderson's commentary on Uniform Commercial Code, it says that this code is supreme. Basically, I'm, some, I'm paraphrasing what it's saying. This code is the law of the land. With, it is superior over all else, everything else, with the exception of pre-code law. And it did not define pre-code law. Well, what would you guess pre-code law would be? What was before the Uniform Commercial Code? Common law. How can common law be summed up in one sentence? You treat someone else the same way that you would have them treat you. 
the law of the people, the law of the Almighty that He gave us. It's the golden rule. Alright? So, now we have that, I think, just a summary. It goes much deeper and you can research that for yourself. Can you say that? UCC 1-103.6, UCC 1-207, and UCC 1-308, which is the amended version, which just points you back to 207. All right. So we all know that they're stealing our exemption. If you've been in this movement a little while and you begin talking with other people and you don't understand what I'm talking about on this, on this discussion video here and the audio, Go and ask somebody. Start researching. What does it mean to have our exemption stolen? If we use a bond, that is our exemption. If we use a bill of exchange, that is our exemption. It should be honored. To exchange for money of exchange and giving the exemption the discharge back over here. So if you have positive over here, you can now balance the negative. With, you can bring it to zero. At the end of every year, fiscal year, what happens with corporations? They want to do a statement. Where, where do they want to go? They want to go to zero or plus. But if they go plus, guess what? Here comes the bigger corporation and says, pay us. Pay us on what you earned. And a lot of times they'll go negative. All right? All right. So what are we doing now with what is commonly called the silver bond, which is really a declaration in the nature of an affidavit for a surety act and bond. What is that? I've always, always heard teaching that we do not want to be surety or guarantee for the straw man's liens or levies. Why? If I, the living soul with the body, the flesh and, the, the flesh and blood body here, became surety, they could grab the collateral. The body is the collateral. Hello. They're the creditor, they believe. And, they, and we would have to prove otherwise. And we can't prove otherwise because they've taken the, the plea of innocence away. And we can't prove a negative, so we're either guilty we're either guilty through not guilty because we can't prove a negative or we're guilty through no contest, no low contende. So what are we doing now? What we're doing is we're going over to this side and we're taking the treasury over here and we're saying with 21 silver dollars, and Walter check, is, I hope you don't mind me using your given, you know, appellation there. Walter Check is the one that has really developed this and he's had help, but really it's, it's the Almighty that he's been listening to by, by the Spirit of the Almighty. He's gotten revelation of how to put this together. Uh, Sir David, Sir Andrew David, or David Andrew was the one that David Sir David Andrew really came up with it, and maybe before that, maybe he got it from somebody else, I don't know. But, so, if they're dishonoring our exemption, by whatever form that we do, and they come back and say, you owe us. After stealing our exemption, it's happened to me many times. It's happened to me a year ago with over 33K worth of instruments. That there was no compensating balance account with promises to pay notes or units. And I was just writing it. I was writing my exemption and saying, go, and here's the voucher over here, the straw man, use it. Well, they stole my exemptions. But I learned something. I learned something how to protect myself. And I also learned something. And I, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that the, that the agents of the keeper of the king's treasury, which is the Lord Exchequer, if you go to England, you'll find that there is a Lord Exchequer of the court, of the, of the royal court. And what is the, the, the Lord Exchequer? The Lord Exchequer is the keeper of the king's treasury. The king and queen always had gold, silver, crown jewels, and everything else kept in a treasury. All right? Let me explain just a little story. I tell, I tell people, if you go back 500 years ago in England, 
you have a king and queen. All right. So the king and queen there, they needed clothing. What would they do? They would put out a royal warrant, a demand proclamation to have one particular tailor out in the marketplace come and be the royal tailor. So here comes the royal tailor with his bolts of cloth, the, the, you know, all the best cloth and the measuring tapes and his assistants and everything. They measure the royal family's bodies, etc. And they go back in the marketplace, make all the royal clothing, come back, do the fitting, and it's all finished with and they just love it. All right? How does that royal tailor get paid? They're over on this side. How do they get paid? Does the Lord Exchequer, the keeper of the king's treasury, go to the treasury and say, let me see, I'll take, take a couple of these uh, crown jewels here, I'll take a little bit of this gold Dublin so here, or I'll take some silver here and I'll go and pay them. No! What are they operating on over here? Get instruments. Yahshua said, bring me a coin. And what they bring him? A worthless piece of metal. It wasn't gold, it wasn't silver. Whose picture is on the coin? Caesar's. Caesar's, the queen, right? So, the, or the king, all right? So, it's just a, now, we think it's valuable. Why? Hello, I don't know why, we just think it's valuable. <laughs> it, we use it as a medium of exchange. But it really goes back to promise to pay, promise to pay, promise to pay. Everybody's promise to pay. And buries deeper and deeper and deeper. And these people over here, the living souls over here that were born in the world with nothing, they go out the world w without anything. And their flatulation stinks like everybody else's flatulation. <laughs> <laughs> they are saying, we're going to make you deeper and deeper and deeper debtors. All right? And that's why they keep on doing it, and we become deep, deeper and deeper and deeper over here. They've taken our gold and our silver. Where did it go? Where, where is that gold and silver of our forefathers in this country? Do we know? Can we access it? Are we the rightful title owners of it? Or is it some fiction? There you go. So we can, we can hold a little bit. But if you start accumulating a whole lot, I'm telling you, they'll come and knock on your door. So as collectors, we can collect. But we can't hoard that. We can't use that as a means of saying we are wealthy. All right? But the 21 silver dollars here, this 21 silver dollars, mm -hmm. they recognize when we have that 21 silver dollars that we are not bankrupt. We are not that bankrupt corporate fiction name. And that's what the silver bond is all about. The silver of our own little treasury becomes the collateral not the body. And it shocks them because they are looking for a crown right here. That's the only royalty, that's the only sovereign that they recognize in this whole fiction system. And here comes a crown out here. And says, hello. I'll pay for that copyrighted, that deeded copyright intellectual property. That's mine in commerce. And I have lawful money to pay with. If you'd like to get this lawful money, here's what you have to do. Answer these questions point by point by point. Sign under the penalty of perjury with three witnesses. And by the way, if you don't do it in a certain period of time, you are completely stopped. And the estoppel language is in there, which means they are frozen. They can't do anything. Under the 72-hour rule, Truth and Lending Act, Regulation Z, if they don't answer, there is a contract. In seven days, four more days from that three days, they are in default. Three more days, a total of ten days, summary judgment. Summary judgment. And you can go forward with involuntary bankruptcy on that corporation as a creditor. Yes? I have a yes? That's a good question. I believe it's business days. Can you repeat, repeat the question? What the question is is, uh, are the weekends counted or holidays weekends counted as? No, the hour. The hour. Or the hour? Yeah. It's stamped that you signed for it at one o'clock. Right, and you respond by mail on. 
the, the time that it, si- that it was stamped. So if you respond two hours later, you are out of the 72 hours. That's correct, but let me ask you the question. Are you a fiction? No, sovereign. You're a sovereign. Did you attach your invoice? No. Did they use your copyrighted copy claim if you have a copyright copy claim? Yes. Yes. Can you attach the invoice for one million silver or two million, three million, however many counts of a violation? Yes. Now that's where I'm getting to here. All right. They're going to steal our exemption. How do we hold their feet to the fire? I'll tell you how, I'm, how I did it. I did this three years ago and it worked. It worked. I was presented by the city of Fort Worth, Texas, one of their policy enforcers. I was presented with a ticket. What is a ticket? A citation. What is a citation? A debt. They're saying here. A bill. An invoice. Whatever. Warrant means demand for payment. It doesn't matter. They're all, they all mean debt. All right. Are we the debtor? No. Who are they talking about? That name. If I sign the name, sign the name without by colon, I'm saying I'm not the agent. I am that name. I'm a thing. They got us. Contract. Okay. Now, what did I do? I attached my invoice to the policy enforcer. He used my my deeded copyright. Thank you very much. Here's your one million dollar invoice. I got his name, his badge number. I, I was very polite. He had a gun on his hip, you know. But he he wanted to do business with me. It was in the public record. It had been there for some time. And everybody in all of commerce should know. If they don't know, it's not my fault. It's in the public record. So everybody should know, especially the public servants, that if, they're, if they want to use that name, they're going to pay me what it says in that contract. They accepted my offer. He accepted my offer of contract. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Here's your invoice. Okay. The municipal court clerk a couple days later, sends me a presentment. What's the presentment? You are required to, to appear. Who was required to appear? Me? No. The name, the fiction. But I didn't care. I'm not going to dispute that. I just said thank you to her too. And Rice told me, he said, I said, can I, can I invoice anybody else? He said, invoice anybody you want with that, that corporation. The mayor too? Yes. Oh, okay. I invoice the mayor. I invoice the the uh, the sheriff. I invoice the municipal the municipal court judge. I invoice the the municipal court clerk, the city manager. And guess what? What happened? I have like six or seven million dollars. I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe eight million. I think it's seven million over there in the city of Fort Worth. And I haven't heard a thing, not a thing, until six months later from the city of Arlington, some third party debt collection agency, ABC debt collection agency, sends me a a demand for payment. That corporation charged it off in the charge-off market. They got paid one way or the other. But guess what I didn't do? I didn't move forward on collection. Now, how could I collect? Are they going to pay me $7 million of silver? Or 24 to 1 ratio? As lawfully stated that they are, they are, if they're going to pay in Federal Reserve notes, are, did they pay me? No. Can I collect? Yes. I have a summary judgment to this day. There is no statute of limitations for fraud. Here you go. You owe me. They're still my debtor. You think you're seeing a picture here of maybe why they didn't put out a warrant? I've been pulled over for the past three years several times, and I, I got, I got in trouble because I didn't stick with that thing that worked and now I'm coming back to it thank you Joe, thank you Walter thank you other people <laughs> Roger and, and Barton and other people Rice you have two minutes. okay let's get really close to this alright, let's review if someone in this com- commercial realm here owes me a hundred million dollars in silver with twenty four to one ratio some corporation owes me and they compel me illegally to contract with them. I'm going to reserve my rights when I contract with by colon and under reserve. So it's not a lawful contract. Would it even be a lawful contract otherwise? It wouldn't even be lawful otherwise. Why? It's a one party contract. One, one signature contract. Unilateral contract. 
a lawful contract must have two living souls uh, signatures or two living souls autographs. All right. So if this if this corporation owes me a hundred million dollars, and then then one of their agents comes over and pulls me over and says, "Pay two hundred dollars," and used my name once, the hundred million has now become one hundred and one million, has it not? And what do I attach with the ticket? Thank you very much. And what do I put on the ticket? I put accepted for value. That's all you have to put is accepted for value. And I put a little sticky tape on there and say, please adjust my account. <laughs> right? Isn't that what we're supposed to do in commerce? What do attorneys love to do? Hello, I've got a question. Two minutes later, the question's answered. What do we get in the mail from the attorney's office? A bill. An invoice or a fax machine. They just bury us in invoices. If I go down to the city of Dallas and I, I put a couple quarters into that parking meter and it expires and I come out, what's in the windshield wiper? A bill. They're saying that I'm the debtor. And I'm saying, wait a minute. I accept that. I accept you're saying that I'm the debtor. Whether it's true or not, I'm just accepting it. When I accept it, I own it. I'm the owner of the whole system anyways. I accept it for value. I attach my bill for how many infractions, how many violations were used against my copyright copy claim. And now what goes back? Am I disputing anything? Am I, am I arguing anything? Am I protesting anything? I'm accepting it. I'm saying thank you. Here, here's a $1 million invoice to you. Thank you very much for doing business with me. And what do I do? I keep on burying them. Keep burying them. And I am now going back to this. I've done it. It works. I'm not advocating that you do it. You do what you want to do. Count the cost. But if you believe in who you are, you know who you are, it doesn't matter what they do. They can scream and shout and be frivolous little children out there with all their arguments and, and saying, you know, all their codes, rules, and regulations. All their language, it doesn't matter. You ever noticed a true, a true monarch in the world? What do they do? How do they act? Protocol. Royal protocol. Royal language. Somebody starts screaming, somebody starts shouting. They're just calm, cool. They have all their servants do their fighting for them the Prime Minister, the Army, the Minister of Defense, and all this, you know, secretaries, whatever. They don't do anything except for royal protocol. They own everything. That's really how we should live. Stay in honor. What happens when a monarch out there in the world, in the history of the world, goes into dishonor and becomes wicked and begins to oppress the people, killing the people? Eventually he's taken out or she's taken out. They're going to put somebody in that office, that corporate fiction office, that is a good king or a good queen. All right? Any questions about this? When you send that back and say, accept it for value, and you also send them a bill. Absolutely. My copyright. Here's your invoice. Here's your invoice. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you think it's beautiful? You can send a copy of your copyright. You can if you want to, or send a copy of a UCC filing that references where you're where your lean, lean is with that, that corporate fiction name, your straw man name. It's referenced that it's filed, recorded with record number, file number in Dallas County Clerk's office, Dallas, Texas. And let them go find it. They're, they're supposed to do their due diligence anyways. And if they don't look in the UCC, that's, their, that's not my problem. They have to do a UCC 11 search and find out in the world of commerce to the all third parties out there in the world of this debt monetary system, who is the creditor, who is the debtor. And if you put that you are the you are the creditor in the world of commerce, hey, you better have a contract with who you say is your debtor. My straw man is my debtor. My corporate fiction name is my debtor. And the secured party is not me. I'm me. That name is the Look in the UCC form and secured, secured party, what does it say? Last name. If it says last name, that's a fiction. doesn't matter how you spell it. I don't have a last name like I, be, I began this discussion with. I don't have a last name. I have a family name. Right. 
I don't have a first name. I don't have a middle name or a middle initial. I have one given appellation. Okay? In that particular situation, David, you're saying that since you've already billed them prior to this particular receipt, you just tell them to deduct it from what you've already billed. Absolutely. Please adjust my account. Here's the bill. They owe me $101 million. It's on record, in the public record. They owe me, and now there's another something that's going in. That invoice is going in. It's attached, UCC3, and it's, it's been recorded. And by the way, if you can't get it into your county record, if, you, if your county clerk is dishonoring all this, keep it with the public notary. Just have it on file with the public notary that's friendly with you. Keep it on file, that stamp. And make sure that you have your by colon... Uh, or your or your or your initials or whatever down at the bottom here and the seal right here and the copy claim over here with a hyphen separ separating your document at the front and back front and back yes go ahead rice does go to, go look at rice's uh, book that he's, he's passed out he I think he sells it for ten dollars or whatever it is he has an invoice in there you're the sovereign you make any invoice you want it, it's not wrong when you demand payment. Now, I did this without silver three years ago. There was no protection of this body. They could have grabbed the body, except they saw that in commerce on this side in the debt to, in the debt monetary system of the world, hey, who was the bigger debtor when I did that? They were. They gave me a $200 ticket, and I, and I give them $7 million invoice in, in silver. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did. I did demand from for them to pay silver, but I didn't. I was not. The, this body was not bonded with twenty-one silver dollars at the time. That's okay. They didn't know. It is bonded now with with uh, twenty-one silver dollars. Yes. So if you want to bond, and don't uh, if you're going to ask the question, please. Yes. Or e either that. Or, or yes. Go ahead and ask the question. I'll, I'll repeat it. Because these people all over the country want to know what's being asked. Okay. It may be honored. The majority of times we're finding that, that that exemption is being dishonored. That's our energy. And the straw man is the voucher for that energy. The straw man, okay, the question is, if we write a bond, thank you, if we write a bond that does not have 21 silver dollars in our possession stated in the bond as the collateral for whatever they're asking us for, is that honored or is that dishonored? The majority of the time it's dishonored. They're stealing them right and left. And they're getting the debt instruments in the form of units electronically, digitally, Electronic funds transfer goes into a computer. When you go to a bank and you have $1,000 in your account, do you ask to see your $1,000 and have them go back and get a box and say, count it out for me, I want to see it? No, they just turn the computer around and you see one comma zero zero zero. Just It's just digits. It's all fiction, right? But that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Now, when we, when we use the silver bond, I believe that what we should start doing is saying, this silver bond is for me. It really is the declaration of a, of a sovereign that separates us from the corporate fiction straw man. Now they're stuck because they can't take the silver bond and go collect from this Secretary of the Treasury. That's a different crown. This is a different crown outside this whole fiction system, you see. They can't go collect with that silver bond. They have to collect with a bond where the voucher is, has a number it's a straw man number. It's a corporate fiction number attached to our name. The, our, it's our last name of our straw man, corporate fiction. That is our bridge into this sea of commerce. This is all matrix. We have to have a bridge somehow. There has to be a connection. It's like a cable being stuck into the back of our head and plugs us in. Okay? That's the straw man. All right? So... What, what I think we should start doing, and I haven't worked this out yet, and maybe we can start doing it, because we want the corporations to continue going. Now give them the, the bond without the silver. It's a promise to pay. Let them go get the payment 
of units in the debt monetary system over on this side. Now they can take that and, so, and they're going, Phew. you know, now they don't have to do whatever they do and whoever the, 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 the head of the corporation is has to pay it or the judge has to pay it or the attorney has to pay it. And what are we doing? They're starting to see that we become righteous sovereigns, that we are righteous kings and queens right on this earth. And we're saying, here you go, we will allow you to discharge what you charged. You charged us something that wasn't right. It wasn't us in the first place, but we'll let you keep on existing and we'll help you keep going to keep this commerce system going. Here you go, go get your electronic funds transfer and the units transferred back to discharge it. Yeah. In terms of time frame, when you talk about that, uh, should you rec do you recommend sending both together or sending the silver bond first, wait three days, send the other bond? We haven't worked that. We haven't worked through that yet. But I believe that what we can do, what's what's going on now, which is so exciting, is they can. Uh, this fiction system cannot step outside the fiction system and come over here and demand silver. They can't touch that silver. They can't touch the silver that's being held by the by the crown over here. All they can do is ask for the pieces of paper or the units that represent the pieces of paper promised to pay. So. Now, if you walked up and you wa you handed some silver dollars to them, they'll take them. They'll steal them from you. Now, but if you ask them or tell them, hey, no, you don't ask. You never you never request. You tell them. You declare. Come and get it. Here you go. It's right here. By the way, you have to do this, do this, and do this, and you have to come out from behind the corporate veil in your living soul capacity, and you have to come and demand these 21 silver dollars and they can't do it under bankruptcy they can't do it and they won't do it they won't and we're allowed to have 21 silver dollars if we have 21 silver dollars or 20 silver dollars plus we are non-bankrupt they're bankrupt we're non-bankrupt yes okay so we keep on running uh, just go, go on and we can ask some questions and answers okay. here and, and until they until they ask us to leave Okay, the question is, is that, and now you're talking, you're, you're not speaking of a silver bond, no, bond right? No. My understanding is that they will say or act like they can't do anything with it, and that's what they write back to us all the time, that they don't recognize it, but just demand for them and see if they will. If they will, then they're telling the truth. The majority of the time they won't because they've already monetized it and it's stamped all over the place by the Federal Reserve System that it's been monetized. And they've, they've got it in some file somewhere, in some filing cabinet. They've already used it. Though. That's right. It's the second notice you're talking about? What, what the, okay, you're asking is the second notice. Okay, the silver bond is a declaration for a sovereign to protect the sovereign's living soul, flesh and blood body. All right. Otherwise, the sovereign's living soul, flesh and blood body is the collateral for the straw man. Sorry. All right. Now, the question is, is what do we do with the other bond to allow them to discharge the charge? We haven't gotten that far yet, but I think we, we already know what the bond looks like. Just write a bond and say, here you go, here's my energy. You could actually just put the word bond up there and put your, put your ink there. Give it to them. They can actually take that and go and get energy from it. They can get, get the discharge. Absolutely. That's true. You might want to put a tracking number there, which is a social security number. Law was registered mail. Registered mail is, is signifying in the world of, uh, of commerce, the sea of commerce, is signifying that they are all foreign to our venue. It's international. We are not domiciled. Certified mail is saying that we are domiciled within their system, that we are a debtor. What well, we're fiction. Second notice, registered, registered mail. That's okay. Sovereign can't make a mistake because you can always do a declaration in the form of a mistake affidavit. <laughs> all right. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Well, you 
there's different examples out there. And yes, uh, Rice McLeod has, has some very excellent examples. Um, I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead and bring that, Walt. Uh, Walt has a very excellent example of the silver bond on this. And I don't, I don't know that you have the regular, just the regular bond without the, the silver, right? But Rice McLeod does, and there's other people out there. And like I said, you know, all they're looking for is the energy, which is your ink. That's all they need. And if you have the word bond, hey, you put the straw man's name, put by colon, under reserve, give them the ink, and they can take that and they can go. And, that's right. Now, the Rice's and some other people, they have wording in it. But they're, you know, they're fictions. They can't read. They don't exist. I don't even know what they're doing, even taking in, taking it to the credit society. They can't do anything. It's the agents, the living souls behind these corporate fictions, acting in their corporate fiction capacity that are doing everything. And they think that they're, that they're not vulnerable that way. I'm telling you, they're all vulnerable. If they don't uphold their oath of office to uphold the corporate charter, our public servants are fictions, and we put them in, we can take them out. We don't want to take out the office. We want to take out the unjust servant, the unjust living soul that is hiding and operating ruthlessly as a rogue in that office. They are, they are supposed to operate and not violate the rights of the people. Now, if they do, they can't hide behind that corporate, that corporate fiction. The big corporate fiction will roll over. They'll get them out. If their corporate charter, is, if the corporate charter of the big corporation is going to be jeopardized, they'll take that agent out. You see it all the time. They're doing it in their own system. Sheriffs and police chiefs and mayors and county clerks, whatever it may be, they're taking them out. Yeah, attorney generals. One of them of Texas, the former one, is in prison right now. Okay, would you use uh, same acceptance for value technique for taxes and property? We are exempt. It's our exemption. Thank you very much. How many times have you used my copyright? My deeded copyright. It's my intellectual property in, in, in commerce. You've put it into the record. By the way, the record is the common law. The, the filings is the, is the fictional side. When you record something with a county recorder that wears two hats, the county recorder's hat is hidden underneath the county clerk's hat. But we, the people, we vote in a county recorder. And they always have a record number along with the filing number. Is this better than sending a bond? No one thing. It freezes the whole system up. Now whether that's better for them, I don't, I don't think it is. Because they have a charge now. It's like a battery is all charged, ready to explode, and they can't, they can't do anything with it. Well, they can. They can expunge it. They can throw it out and, and just write it off at the back end of the year on the charge off. They can charge it off in the charge off market. All right. So are you hearing these terms? Have you ever heard these terms before on TV and all that? The charge off market and buying bad debt and you know, you know, student loans and car loans and medical loans and all this and you buy them for pennies on the dollar. Where do you think those, those, those notes came from? They came from big corporations or banks, which are corporations that charge it off. They're gonna get, they're gonna get the write off one, one way or other. They're either gonna get paid in the front with a promise to pay, or they're going to take it off at the end, in the back end. They're getting their payment, and then over and above that, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, sell it for pennies on the dollar. Uh, if, if everybody has not received this, let's pass these around again to make sure that they receive it. I think it's I think it's a uh, pretty good theory. Yes, Ron. How do you copyright your name when there are 1,000 other John Smiths? Does your copyright cover only you or all of them? Very good question. There is only one number for your corporate fiction straw man. And if anybody else is using that number, it's called identity theft. All right? But I can guarantee you if people are out there and they haven't used it, all right, they haven't copyrighted, copy claimed, and you have it, it's first come, first serve. So how many John Smiths are there out there? How many John A. Smiths are there out there? How many John Allen Smiths are there out there? Probably a few. But does every single one have the same birth date, which is their birthright? 
Does every single one have the same social security number, which is their tracking number for their corporate fiction straw man name? No. They all have different numbers, don't they? So what are you doing? You're copywriting the number as well. You're copywriting the birth certificate number as well. You're copywriting everything that is attached. All liens, levies, anything that's attached. All adhesion contracts, any contracts. The birth certificate is usually the, is considered the, the very first contract in commerce. It's the birth of a corporation when the living soul is birthed. And then after the living soul is birthed, the parents... The mother is the informant. She gives the name. The father gives the name. All right. When they give the name, now they give over without power of attorney from that baby who is the rightful owner now. When my parents, my living soul parents, gave me my given appellation, my one given appellation, I didn't, I didn't give them power of attorney to give it over to a corporate fiction called the state of Florida and to give it to the governor and let him you know, sell it to the Department of Commerce. I didn't do that. I didn't say, excuse me, excuse me, wah, 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 wah. Uh, let me have the pen here, I want to sign the contract. So what they do? To get my seal, they put ink on the bottom of my feet and they put it on the contract. And said, oh, there's the sovereign, the sovereign is okayed. That's like putting your thumbprint on the bottom corner of, you know. Uh, that was not full disclosure. I, I didn't understand what was going on. Meaning I did not stand under what was going on. That's what they're saying. Do you understand the charges that are brought against you? It's not you. Charges can only be brought against a corporate fiction. What do you answer? I don't understand. What were you saying? I'm not standing under those charges. That's what they're saying to us. Yes. Okay. You can always add, back uh, a few years ago, I wanted to put some, some more material into my copyright um, and I didn't know how to do it. I went to several people and that had been using this and nobody, nobody had been doing this. And I don't know if I was the first one, maybe other people have, I don't know. But I just prayed about it and the Holy Spirit told me, just put an addendum. Reference the, the original recording number of the original copyright. So if you haven't copyrighted, if you haven't copy claimed your name, you can do an addendum and you can copy claim that. If you haven't put it as a trademark as well, you can do that. You can add that as a... Then you can, there's, there's no limit to what you can do. You're sovereign. You're not operating under these fictions. You're not the fictions. So you are not under their jurisdiction. Juris, diction, diction of juris. Juris meaning law or legal. Diction means language. Yes, if, if I have time. I don't know if I have time. I want to say here that this is Walter Check. See, there he is right there. That's him. Speak, Walter, speak. That's not. <laughs> that's a picture of Walter Check. It's a fiction. It's not him. It's ink on a piece of paper. <laughs> and this is his CD. And you can get it from... Uh, go ahead and tell me what the, the website is. Okay, sweetspirittexas.org. Org. Okay. How are we doing on time? We're almost out of tape. We're almost out of tape. Yeah. Real quick question. You're right. Yes, you're right. And it's being done. It's being done very successfully. Public servants do not have a DBA. And I believe that the reason that the fictions are not doing DBAs or the living souls behind the, the fictional office is not, are not doing DBAs, that's, an, that's a tacit admittal of being a fiction. Doing business as a fiction. So uh, the question was, can you do others? Well, let's get back to the golden rule. Would you want someone doing that on you? No. All right. So you shouldn't do it on other people. But if you have a public servant that's trying to injure you and he needs to be taken out of that office, you can do it in connection with the office name to, as an identifier that who, this is who you're talking about. You don't copyright the office of the mayor. You copyright such and such a person doing business as mayor such and such a person. Yes, I think we need to go, right? Oh, no, no, I was asking if they want some water or tea.
Okay, are we doing okay on time? Yes, sir. Okay. It's fine. Thank you. So, uh, uh, let me ask you a question. To be continued? Yes. You want it to be continued? We can talk more about this. Yes. All right. Okay. And I think next time, um, you have a question? Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of new to all this. Yeah. Okay, the question is, suppose he, okay, there, suppose there's a friend that comes from another country and comes into this country. The question is, can he operate as a sovereign? I believe we are all born sovereign. When we begin to breathe, we are operating as a sovereign. All right? Correct. What we're doing is we're putting the fictional system on notice that we are their sovereign. Otherwise, they won't believe it. They think we're some corporate fiction just like they are. Yeah. yeah the IACA, which is the parent group which records all of the Uniform Commercial Code documents, the IACA, just punch it up on your... What does that stand for, Joe? The IACA, uh, which records all <laughs> records all Uniform Commercial Code documents. Uh, uh, something recorded okay. uh, association. In any event, it's a uh, international so, organization and it deals with all English-speaking countries, United States, Canada, Great Britain, Australia, the territories of New Zealand. So all those people are under British contract, common law, codified with the UCC. And you'll find a little lady that runs it up in Canada, where she lives. Well, I had some, I had some friends and they were, I think they called themselves commoners or something. <laughs> Canada, and I know they drive their cars with no license, no registrations on them. And I, I, I guess one of our friends got pulled over, and he said, he "Said to the cop, you're dismissed, servant." <laughs> well, they took him to jail, but they had to let him go. It's all a matter of words, and what we really need to start learning is the language of commerce, because they know the language of commerce, and the attorneys, a turn, they twist the words. And any bar attorney, which is British accredited regency attorney, is twisting the English language. And that's why I mentioned a moment ago, do you understand the charges? Well, the charges can only be on a corporate fiction. So you say, no, I don't understand. I'm just here to find out who has a claim against me. Claims are from sovereigns to sovereigns. Yes. Well, there's a city out here in West Texas. The question is, can I mention something about what's going on out in West Texas? Uh, the, the living soul servants, because they're acting in, in the capacity of a public servant, have been in dishonor for a long time, just like many of these municipal corporations and many of the state corporations and many of the federal corporations worldwide. All right? Most. And it's getting rampant. Um, the question is, can I mention something about that? Well, I can just tell you we're right in the midst of it, and it's working. And the man that is the one that's signing by colon for all these documents, we are continuing to coach him to stay in honor. Never argue. Never dialogue once you've fired. When you fire an attorney or you fire a public servant, they, the fiction doesn't exist. That living soul operating DBA doing business as this fiction doesn't exist. And uh, on top of that, the title ownership has changed now from the big state corporation to